Hi, I'm Catherine Diorio, and welcome to Check, Please, the show where regular people from all over Chicago recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week, we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and the other two go check them out and see what they think. This week, DJ Johnny Love says that if you're looking for an outstanding breakfast spot that puts its own spin on homemade favorites, join him at the Northside Gem. But CEO Joanna Grange says the folks running the show at her selection are the best in town because of sensational service, incredible energy, and perfect Peruvian food. Up first, Vintner Krishan Lampley says that her Jamaican spot crushes the competition. She says if you like flavor and spice and everything nice, then come on over to Hyde Park and join the party at Ja Grill. You know, when you come in, and it's supposed to be greeted with a warm smile, you hear the beats in the back, be able to, you know, get a relaxed feeling, hear the music, um, and begin to enjoy a wonderful Caribbean experience. We wonder if you feel like you're actually in Jamaica. The only thing you're not going to get is the beach. There's basically four main flavors in Jamaica. The jerk process, curry, stew, and escovite. Out of about 40 items on our menu, only five of them actually are cooked spicy. If you want us to kick it up a notch, we can. But what a lot of people don't understand is jerk chicken is a, is a process of very flavorful chicken cuisine. But what really tops it off is your jerk sauce. That's what differentiates jerk chicken. Enjoy the food, enjoy the service, enjoy the spirits, enjoy the beats. Where can you experience an authentic cuisine from Jamaica other than Ja Grill? Sean, you say Ja Grill is quite a thrill. Why'd you choose it? Oh my gosh, Ja Grill is a part of the neighborhood. I grew up in the North Kenwood area and to believe that Hyde Park has these fantastic restaurants in it, a lot of people don't know. And Ja Grill was the perfect, perfect uh, restaurant to come into the area. So I'm, I'm a jerk fanatic, of course. So uh, <laughs> Ja Grill has the best jerk everything. I cannot even stress how great the seasoning is. You have to experience it. <laughs> I was actually super excited when I saw it was a Jamaican place because I really like Jamaican food and there's a spot close to my house that I go to kind of regularly and I like goat, I like oxtail, I like jerk chicken, I like all that stuff um, but I ordered the goat curry and I thought that the goat, uh, maybe it was an off night, uh, but the goat was like not very flavorful which is a bummer because I was like I'm really into goat and I love curry goat. Um, the plantains were really good, the rice and beans were really good, the cabbage actually was phenomenal. Yes. Like I ate the cabbage and I was like, whoa, this is really, really good cabbage. Yeah. And my friend got the jerk wings and he said those, and he, he got them, he's like, I want them waiver hot. Like I need to sign a waiver to eat them. And so <laughs> okay, he liked it and he was like, yeah, it was great. Um, my girlfriend had the shrimp, it, the curry shrimp was good actually. Yes, it is. Um, but I thought another friend of mine had um, the jerk chicken and another one had jerk catfish. And those were just like, didn't hit it for me either. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I was like, I was pretty bummed out because I went in there like really, really hyped on it. And it just didn't do it for me. What was it, what was it about it? How was how the season not perfect? It just tasted, to be honest, it tasted just kind of like boiled and like, I don't know, maybe it's because we went in kind of late because I went in on a Saturday night because I was like, it's supposed to be like really like a hop and spot at night. Right. And maybe it was because it was late or I don't know what. But it just, just like a bad goat day. Just it, a bad goat. The goat day. was not in a good mood. <laughs> the goat, well, the goat is obviously it's a very traditional <laughs> d Jamaican dish, but it's traditionally actually one of the least spicy dishes Correct. in Jamaican cuisine. Yes, it is. Versus obviously a jerk chicken. But Joanna, what did you think? So we have two opinions here. You're the, the tiebreaker. Well, my husband and I went on a Monday night, mm -hmm. which is arguably not the sexiest night for any restaurant, and. We had a really great experience. We had the opposite, with all due respect. Um, so we ordered the jerk shrimp appetizer, and I like spicy food mm -hmm. to an extent. My husband loves them. My mouth was on fire, but in a good way. Like, I really enjoyed it, but I had to give myself a T.O. for a little bit because, it, I mean, it's a flavor explosion in your mouth, and that's the best way I can describe that restaurant. So we had that. I had the jerk chicken, he had the goat as well. They did a platter, so he had two entrees and the other was the oxtail. And um, I tried them, 
I'm not huge fanatics about those proteins, but I did enjoy them, and we had huge generous portions, too, that we were able to take home, and that was pretty awesome. Yeah. And did anybody enjoy the beef patties? Oh my God. I didn't try those. Oh, jeez. Beef patties are to die for. It's a reason to go back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Johnny, you're our resident nightlife expert here, so yeah. what did you think of the vibe? Um, I didn't think it was exceptional. Like, I was looking forward to, because I heard it was like, a, it was like music. And when we got there, it was just a, a DJ who was, truth be told, he looked kind of bored. Um, <laughs> and, because, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't really, there was no dance floor. It was just kind of like a hangout spot, you know. I think Monday's the night you need to go. Like, right? That's where the <laughs> cool kids <laughs> go out on Monday nights, right? <laughs> um, I agree. No, all kidding aside, I mean, it was really vibrant. The clientele couldn't have been more diverse. Young, more mature audience, um, went right in the dinner hour. It was really boisterous inside. I saw all kinds of clientele in there. So Johnny, you didn't love the food, but you liked the service. The, the staff was really good. Uh, the waiter was really polite, super nice. In fact, I, he was so nice that I was worried that he knew that I was there for this <laughs> show. Because we, like, we walked in and I told my friends, I was like, no matter what, do not mention what we're here for. And no one did, but I was like, the guy was super nice. But without, so we, we, without knowing that I was coming for the show, he was like very attentive and very good. So that was like a big plus for sure. Great. So Tony Coates is the owner, and he just fell in love with Jamaican cuisine, and um, actually met a chef who specializes in Jamaican cuisine, and they opened Shaw Grill. And he had original location on the north side, and so many people were coming from the south side that he yes. just moved his location up to the up to the south side. Yeah, I used to take yeah. a long trip out there to, to yeah. Armitage to go visit him there. So yeah, I'm happy he's, he's in my neighborhood. I'm very happy. Let's talk about Hyde Park. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's always been this really beautiful, vibrant neighborhood, yes. but that particular area is just kind of becoming a restaurant enclave. Now. It's on fire. It's yeah. on fire. I've stayed in that area. I'm, I'm actually in North Kenwood, which is literally one block off from uh, Hyde Park. And I've been there since 03, 2003, I bought my home there. And to see the acceleration again of just the restaurants, uh, the, the lounges, like you want to just walk. I used to always think, you know, oh, I have to go north. Uh, to enjoy different restaurants and enjoy different vibes and, and bars and things. But now I can just go to 53rd Street and go up and down the street. So, Krishan, you chose Jaw Grill? Yes. Sum it up for us. Must have, go, jerk, 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 everything. I love it. You have to experience the neighborhood. Johnny? Um, I didn't like it the first time I went, but maybe I'm the jerk for now. <laughs> <laughs> and Joanna? Uh, vibrant. Go for the, the spice and the, the flavor explosion that I talked about. You can try the jerk chicken and more at Ja Grill, 1510 East Harper Court, 773-752-5375. Open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is $28. Joanna Grange is used to being in charge, so it's nice to let loose and put herself in the hands of an expert and her recommendation. She says for a voyage through Peru via the food, join her on Grand Avenue at Tanta. Forget about what is outside of these doors. This is a new world inside of Tanta that is basically Peruvian to see and the Peruvian you know, happiness and, and, and the vibrant atmosphere that you can find in Lima, you find it here in Chicago. People come for the first time. It's because they are, you know, they hear about Peruvian food. Or Peruvian food is a mixture of a lot of cultures: Chinese influence, Japanese influence, African influence, Spanish. We have different flavors, spices, everything. It's a very intimidating menu, and we are aware of that. It's about 45 items, and 
it's basically in the mix of Spanish words and, and dishes you never hear in your life before. Uh, we train our staff very well. They're very knowledgeable about making people comfortable. Talk about the menu, small plates. Tanta is actually, uh, I mean, it's, uh, bread, but it's more like a holy bread, a reunion, sharing in between people uh, one meal and, and having fun with it. That's very much what uh, Tanta means. So, Joanna, you say Tanta is terrific. Why'd you choose it? There's a lot of reasons. I remember when it first hit the scene, my husband and I generally like to try new restaurants. There's a bit of nostalgia because we traveled in South America quite a bit. Um, and it's kind of in a sceny place. I mean, reality is it's nice to go to those once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, and Peruvian's different. It's not getting beaten down to death in Chicago and right. it's no longer the new kid on the block. But I think it sustained a level of great quality and authenticity. The menu has a little bit for everybody. You can get great seafood and they're known for their seafood. Their ceviche or ceviche. One of my favorite dishes is the grilled octopus. I think it's the best I've had in my life. I just recalled one of the best dishes that we had that we hadn't had previously was a quinoa dish, the nice vegetarian option. And they make a mean pisco sour, so definitely have a DD. <laughs> I love pisco sour. It's yeah. the national drink of Peru, so you kind of almost have <laughs> yeah. to have it when you get it. Yes, out. you do, you do. So, Krishan, what did you think of it? Uh, <laughs> it was interesting. So, okay, when I got there, it was exactly what I expected as far as the atmosphere is concerned. I expected to walk in New York, New York, very loud, obnoxious, that's, but that's what I wanted, <laughs> I, and that's what I expected from it. But I ended up having good news. I had the empanadas, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal empanadas, I had the beef, and I had the chicken as well. Mm -hmm. We got to the ceviche. Mm -hmm. It was rubbery, bland. It, literally, I took a piece of mahi-mahi and put uh, some lemon on it. So it, my expectations were so, so high from those empanadas that it kind of brought me back down. Also, I had uh, the steak for dinner. It was just fat upon fat. Upon, I was chewing fat. So I'm like, okay, it's all about the wine list because now I'm at a place that I'm really going to enjoy this wine list. So when I asked the server about the wine, she's like, oh, just choose anything. It's all great. And I need a little more information than that. So atmosphere, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, yeah. I have to say, I like I don't ever like really dress up to go out, mm -hmm. and so I kind of gauge like people might assume how I'm dressed up or you know whatever. They're like, this guy's gonna eat a tip like crap, or he's just like doesn't know what he's eating. He's just a jerk, or, you know whatever. Um, but it was it was great. I mean, it, there was no. I mean, they were they were, they were wonderful. Like there's no complaints at all. It was like they, my water was always full. The mm -hmm. food came out quick, and everything was good. Like starting with the plantain chips mm -hmm. was were phenomenal. It had this little uh, like pepper cream cheese dipping sauce, mm -hmm. which we got like three more of because we couldn't stop eating it. It was just so good. Um, and then we got empanadas, we got the beef ones. Um, we had ceviche. Um, I had the chicharron. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really good. Uh, my friend who's Japanese ordered, uh, the, it, was, it was something with quail egg and some kind of steak. It was the wagyu beef, the yeah, nigiri. Yeah, it was really, mm -hmm. really good. And then she also got the grilled octopus. And the, I mean, everything I had was was like unbelievable. And my friend ordered the, p the pisco sour and it was really, really good. It was like the like the, the texture, like the mouthfeel, everything was just, like, it was just like really well done. So Peruvian food is so interesting because it's this melting pot of flavors from different cultures. So you have Japanese flavors and then you have Spanish flavors in there, you have Italian flavors in there from all of these people that have come through the area. So I mean, how do you order there? How would you recommend someone goes and orders there? Go with a group, I would say. It's really portioned off. So you've mm -hmm. got your sushi, you've got your ceviche, you've got your empanadas, it's kind mm -hmm. of giving you almost like Peruvian food groups of which you should try that are popular, mm -hmm. popular really items in their cuisine. Because then I okay. couldn't really understand it. So maybe if the waitress had explained it to me a little more, I would have, because I, I don't normally eat Peruvian. I'm somebody that will eat and try anything. If okay. she had to, you know what, you should try this, this, I'm mm -hmm. like, bring it on. Did you feel that your server helped you kind of navigate the menu? I'm familiar with Latin American cuisine, so I okay. knew what ceviche was and a chicharron and all that stuff, empanadas, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I knew what the stuff was. So I wasn't, like, it, was, it wasn't foreign to me. You didn't feel like no. lost out at sea yeah, I was like, oh, I know the exactly menu. what's gonna, yeah, this looks good, you know. In fact, I'm gonna take my girlfriend there on a date sometime soon. Jonna, who do you take when you go? It's always a date night for us. Part and parcel because it's a little bit fancier, I feel mm -hmm. like, and it sort of warrants dressing up a little bit. Okay. I think it's a great place to go with girlfriends. In reality, we've always eaten in the dining room and had really great service. This time, we opted for the rooftop, which was a new addition for us. 
there happened to be a lot of corporate events and parties and people there for a happy hour. It was lively and we just shared a bunch of plates this time around, which was really fun. When we went upstairs to look at the rooftop, it looked phenomenal. So I totally would go there for empanadas with girlfriends or with a date again uh, and, and hang out at the rooftop. Is it a young, did you feel like it was really young and like youthful, the vibe there or? Not again, who went. would feel comfortable in this restaurant? I think everybody. Um, but that's again, if you don't want, if you don't want something that's fast-paced and busy, and a lot of people don't go. I think it's definitely a, a good mix. But if you don't, if you don't like noise, don't go. Joanna, you chose Tanta. Sum it up for us. Authentic. Go for seafood and a good pisco sour and a fun scene of a totally diverse audience that you can watch all night long. Great. And Krishan? I'm sitting on the rooftop eating empanadas. <laughs> and Johnny? I loved it. I had no complaints. The drinks were good. The ambiance was good. Service is great. I would go again. You can try the Peruvian plates for yourself at Tanta. 118 West Grand Avenue. 312-222-9700. Open for dinner every day. Reservations are accepted. And the average tab per person without drinks is $40. Johnny Love isn't a hater, but he thought that Chicago's breakfast fair was a little boring until he found his new favorite spot. He says for a great way to start the day, join him in North Park at the Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club. When people walk into Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club, they're expecting to have a good meal, you know, a good experience from the restaurant, and, you know, and pass a good time. We have a different like, place from like a Mexican to like a Mediterranean, to, like a, a Greek. I have the Korean pancake, the payun, that's really good. My favorites are the, 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 the sweets, like the bread pudding, French toast, the maya. Since like I started cooking, I was working in different places, so I was like picking like a dish that I like in one place, another dish that I like in another place, trying to put it together, my own idea. For me, just, I'm not just a cook. I don't want to mention my name. Yeah, I just want to know for the good food, not for my name. And when you know, when they leave, they leave happy, and you know, I'm happy. So you know, that make a difference. I want to say it's the best place in Chicago. <laughs> so Johnny, you have mad love for Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club. Tell us why you chose it. Uh, well, as someone who's involved in nightlife, uh, Saturday and Sunday mornings are usually very, very grueling. And uh, it's always a struggle to find, to be able to find a, a place that's close enough to get brunch at. And I just randomly found Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club one day, just like it had just recently opened up. And I, I went with my friends, like, let's go over there. And the menu was like, I was like, whoa, this is like actually pretty exciting. Um, I really liked that it was, you know, there's a lot of Koreans up there and there's a lot of Mexicans around there. Uh, that it was a fusion of all the different cuisines. Like the Korean one, they have like a, a pajun, I'm not even some spell, I'm pronouncing it right, uh, pancake, mm -hmm. and uh, which is really good. But my favorite thing is the Caribbean omelets, like shrimp, avocado, mango salsa, and it's like super, it's like actually really good for a hangover because it's kind of refreshing uh, and you kind of need that to kind of like <laughs> fix your brain a little bit. Right. Um, all the sweet stuff is really good. I mean, I can't even remember because my girlfriend always orders something sweet. And I'm always kind of like trying a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I everything I've had there, I've never had a bad thing there. It's just unbelievable. I had a great time. Uh, it was phenomenal. I actually went at, I, I arrived literally at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, okay, I have to go all the way from North Kenwood. There's no way I'm going late in the midst of traffic, even on a Sunday, traffic, mm -hmm. right? So I get there, I'm able to park, have that park app, and I'm literally right in front. So when I go in, there's maybe three or four people sitting there and the wait staff was phenomenal. They were like right on you. If I didn't have my coffee, if I didn't have extra napkins, I had water. Everybody had a smile on their face. 
steak skillet to die for. Like I did not have to put cheese on my eggs. It's the pico de gallo that did it. You know, it was amazing. So the staff was great. I ate everything. I ate the entire skillet. I don't think I've ever eaten an entire skillet at any breakfast spot. I'm guilty of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, my assistant, she had, uh, I think she had something with the, the um, like biscuits. I think it was like gravy and biscuits, biscuits and gravy, and gravy yeah. with the pork sausage. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't eat pork, so I, I wasn't into that, but she likes ate it all up. So what'd you think, Joanna? We loved it. I went with, we went as a family. So we brought our girls, mm -hmm. which, I mean, a big testament to a restaurant is mm -hmm. how do they deal with children? And there's a time and a place. Um, we showed up very bright and early. I'm not vegetarian, but I ordered a vegetarian skillet because it sounded okay. good that day. I saw that, yeah. And it was delish. And again, portions I had leftovers. So um, they make a really mean like breakfast potato. Mm -hmm. And you can judge a lot about a restaurant by their breakfast oh, potato. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that so is true. there's that. And then my husband ordered the Mayan Benedict, uh -huh. is that correct? Mm -hmm. And wow, so much flavor in there. He was actually quiet for such a long time. <laughs> and that's the test of a really great dish. Yes. So. So, ladies have both said they're early risers, so can you give us a little bit of a sense of when a good time to go is? Is it super crowded if you wake up too late? Um, well, apparently it's fine in the morning, which I'll never know. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but we, I go there, I think it closes at 3, we always get there like right at 2.30, just like right under the wire. Okay. And it's, I think, I've, maybe the longest I've ever had to wait was five minutes. Sometimes when you roll into a restaurant at 2.30 and they close at 3.00, they're not happy about it. Yeah. What's no, it like I, here? They, and it's, they've, they're always super nice and like the quality doesn't suffer. So yeah, I mean, there's never any resentment. I know that's like a faux pas to go super late, but come on, like it's not my fault I party all night. <laughs> you know, that's my job. Of course not. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's part of your job. What is the price point like? It was way less expensive than it's I thought. Super expensive. Yeah, yeah, like when I got the bill, I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> like that's great. it? Uh, I thought it was a great price point. They had a kid's menu. That's a big thing. Sometimes it's the rake when toddlers don't eat a lot and you have to pay for a full portion. So right. I'm pulling on my mom hat a little bit here, but <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. It's good, it's good that. to know, though. Yeah, I think great. there's a, like, a rustic charm to it, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the decor is really cool. Yeah. Um, and I saw a lot of couples and I saw a lot of families in there, too. So they were great. And to your point, I mean, the service, even though they were so busy, they, you know, our coffees were always filled, and, but there was definitely a charming feel about it. I'd take a date. I think it was quite romantic for a, for a Sunday morning. I think that it's, it's pretty sexy. Johnny, this is one of your regular breakfast spots. So who could we expect to see there dining? It's, it's a pretty diverse range of people. Um, I, it's a, it's a, I've seen a couple families. It's a lot of older neighborhood people. It's, there's like some young people. I feel like my group is definitely the most standout mm -hmm. group. But the nice thing too is that since it's so neighborhood, it's like very welcoming. Mm -hmm. Like I, we never walk in, people they never like stop and stare at us because there's a few of us who have tat visible tattoos and whatever. But, um, but it's like, yeah, it's like super welcoming, super diverse. I mean, it's 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 really nice. I felt very comfortable. I'm walking in with my spiked hair, and my assistant has Diana Ross hair, and <laughs> we were great. Like it was very comfortable. I would so bring a date. The food is hearty, so uh, I would go in a heartbeat. When I went there a bunch of times, I and I noticed that the staff was overwhelmingly. Latino. So I went and I looked up, you know, information about it and I saw that the owner, you know, started at some restaurant and eventually like worked his way up and to the point where he opened his own restaurant and he's just killing it now. Like That's that awesome. place is so That's good. Awesome. So I, it, it makes me feel good because like my mom's a Mexican immigrant and to see someone who came and made it is like, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like a feel good story and to go with feel good food. Johnny, you chose Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club. Sum it up for us. Convenient, unpretentious, delicious. Great. Krishan? Definitely the skillet. I'll eat it up. Great. And Joanna? Approachable, charming, savory. You can taste the skillet and more at Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club, 3401 West Bryn Mawr Avenue, 872-208-7079. Open for breakfast and lunch every day. Reservations are not accepted. Alcohol is BYOB, and the average tab per person is $10. So on this week's show, we feature Ja Grill in Hyde Park, Tonta in River North, and Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club in North Park. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we showed up on the south side at Ja Grill. Krishan recommends it for the best jerk chicken around town. Johnny thought his food was lacking flavor and wasn't impressed with the overall experience. Joanna said it was a flavor explosion and considers it to be a neighborhood gem. Next, we popped over to Grand and took a seat at Tanta. Joanna recommends it for the sceney vibe and authentic Peruvian cuisine. Krishan wasn't impressed with all the food, but would go back for the rooftop. 
Johnny really enjoyed his meal and will return. Lastly, we made our way to Bryn Mawr and joined in at Bryn Mawr Breakfast Club. Johnny recommends it for their diversity and fusion of cultural cuisines. Krishan said the service was great and the portions were huge for the price point. Joanna loved the food and was impressed with the fresh ingredients. We had such a good time this week. I want to thank my guests, Krishan Lampley, Joanna Grange, and Johnny Love. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Catherine Diorio, and I'll see you then. Cheers. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Please, go to wttw.com slash check please. Thank you.